Hey, good morning everybody. It's Mike and thanks for joining us this morning. I want to talk to you today about two different things. And the first is conflict. Um, you know, as agents, and I guess I don't really care how good of an agent you think you are, we're going to run into conflict from time to time. Okay? We're going to have conflict with our sometimes our buyers, maybe a seller, uh, perhaps another agent, uh, mortgage professionals, closing attorneys. We're going to run into conflict in our business. And you know, those of you trying to stay out of it, I've got some bad news for you. The amount of conflict you deal with is in direct proportion to the amount of business that you'll do. Do more business, you're going to experience more conflict. Uh, the only way to really stay out of conflict for the year ahead is just don't do any business. But I guess that'll present a problem of a different nature, won't it? I want to give you this morning some tips that I learned during the course of my career and hope that they'll help you and leave you with an observation this morning. The first is, and we really got to internalize this, you just can't control other people. I know we want to. And one characteristic that all highly productive agents have is we tend to be a lot of control freaks, me included. But we can't control other people. You can't control other people's behavior. All you can control is how you respond to it. You can't really control what's going to happen to you and what's going to come along, but you can control how you respond to it. People are going to get emotional. They're going to become outrageous at times. They're going to be inflammatory. I don't know why. It's probably somewhere during the course of their life they learned that they get what they want when they do that, or they're just all out of skills and becoming an, having an emotional tirade is the only skill they have. They really haven't developed. They're not as developed maybe as you are. It doesn't mean you have to respond the same way. If somebody's inflammatory to you, uh, control your personal power. And that is in how you allow yourself to respond to any situation. Okay? Now, I want to give you an observation. In my job now, I get to see conflict over a wider range of issues. Uh, sometimes we're in the wrong. Other times it's other people. It doesn't really matter. Here's the common characteristic that I'm observing. We're not talking to people. Most of this conflict is through text and email exchanges. And there's very little conversation going on. And there's no resolution. And I get the answer of Mike, the customer will only talk, will only communicate via text messages. I get it. I also get this, that if I'm on 285 this morning and I accidentally move over into somebody else's lane, uh, I get that they'll give me a hand gesture. I get how easy that is to do on the highway. Somebody will give me the finger. Mm -hmm. They'll honk at me. They'll say horrible things about another person in the privacy of their own car. And I fully get why. Because I'm not another person to them. I'm an automobile on the highway. If we were standing in the grocery store and I accidentally bumped into somebody, they wouldn't give me the finger. Who does that? Nobody does that. Why? Because I'm a human being there in front of them. That's why. On the highway, I'm just another car. When you deal with conflict via email and text messaging, you're not another human being. You're just an email. You're just a text message. And people become more outrageous in safe environments like that. You can't hear the tone in people's voice. You can't hear the reasonability. You're not reaching any resolution or common ground. So my tip to you is, as easy and convenient and as stubborn sometimes as the other people can be about what method of communication they'll use, insist on a phone call. Hey, Jim, it's apparent we need to talk. Please give me some time today that's convenient for you and let's have a conversation. Absolutely insist on talking to people. You're not resolving any conflict. You're not putting out any fires. You're not reaching any common ground or connectedness via these emails and text messages. 
Right now, today, I have five different issues on my desk that have to be paid attention to. People with their nose all out of joint. And all five of them have this in common. Nobody's talking to each other. They're just trading emails and text messages. Do yourself a favor. Deal with humans live. Talk to them. You'll find that you reach resolution much more often. Now, I want to leave you with this. Tonight, starting at 6 o'clock, we're having our holiday party. I'm really looking forward to it. We have the Bourbon Brothers in concert tonight. These are recording artists. They're professionals. Not some local pickup band. These guys are pros, and they're great. And Greg Burdoff, one of our associates, is uh, the lead guitar player. And I hope you'll come. It's it's going to be really fun. The room's all decorated up. It looks awesome. We've got a lot of food. We've got a lot of adult beverages. Um, and here's, I know everybody's wondering, well, what do I wear? I don't care what you wear. I just care that you come. And I don't care how long you stay for. Just come and stay for as long as you can. If you want to get there at 6 and stay the whole time, that's great. If you can only pop in, that's fine too. And I don't care what you wear either. You can wear uh, business attire or formal attire or holiday attire or whatever you have on. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you just come and join us for a little while and we're going to have a great time and it's a relaxing way to get to know each other. I know some people are bringing their kids and that's terrific. Uh, so um, just as a personal ask, I'm really looking forward to seeing you tonight. I hope you'll make the effort. And I hope you go out there and make it happen for yourself today.